All right, so we're going to continue on um, with animation. I know we briefly covered this already, but I'm just going to go over the basics again. Uh, so again, right down here in our bottom left corner, we have our view. It's currently zoomed all the way out, but you can go ahead and either drag this over or press these larger mountains over here to zoom in or out. Uh, to preview your animations, you can just press the play button. And to stop that preview, you just hit the stop button right next to it. Again, everything that, every object that is on your screen is represented on its own layer on the timeline. And we have the timeline divided up by seconds as well as quarter second marks. On the left here, you're able to double click and rename any of your objects help you keep things organized. And over here, we have two icons. You have the eye, which toggles between um, the view being on or off, as you can see in the upper right corner. If you click this master eye up here, it will turn everything off or everything on, aside from the background, which we have in the slide master. We also have a lock option. You can lock each individual object or all of them. I highly suggest using this lock option when you have a lot of layers going on. It's very easy to just drag one over and mess up the animation. So when you're done with the slide, again, I suggest just go ahead and locking all of that. If you have to come back and change something, you can just unlock one at a time. Okay, so let's start out um, by animating this text that's on the screen. So let's say that we want each of these bullets to come in one by one. There's two different ways to do this. So as you can see on the left side, this group of bullets is just in one text box. And on the right side here, they're each in their own text box. So if we wanted to have each of these come in separately, you see they're all different layers down here represented. So that makes it pretty easy to just select this. OK, that's this one right here. We want that to come in at one second, maybe this to come in at two seconds. So I'm just clicking on the layer and dragging over. This to come in at three seconds, and you can see it aligns up at the top. And this to come in at four seconds. Okay, and um, let's say I just want these to fade in. So again, I'm going to hold down my shift key and select all of them at once. Go to my animations tab up here and select from the drop-down list and put fade in all at once. Okay, so let's go ahead and give that a preview. You can see each one fades in nicely, one second apart. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Now we'll show you the other option. So it is simpler to have all of your items just in one text box here, but the trick is, okay, well, how am I going to animate these each separately? So what you would do is just select this text box and go right up back to your animations. And we want to fade it in, but instead of all at once, we're going to say by first level paragraph. So you see, as soon as I clicked that, this little arrow appears right here, just as it does when you group something together. So if I go ahead and expand that view, then we have each of our individual layers. It broke up that text box for us. So I can just do the same thing as I did before. Drag these over. And so you see the result is the exact same. It just depends on your preference. All right. So I'm going to close that view, zoom out a little bit. So you'll notice our timeline is currently about 38 seconds. That reflects on the seek bar, which you probably just saw in the preview mode. So however long your audio is, we don't have audio in here, but you want to make sure that this is just right up at the end of your audio and not extended any much farther past it, because then your user is going to see the, the seek bar keep continuing on once the audio is over. So you want to keep track of where this is at. You'll also notice these, um, these gray triangles again here at the end. This is an indication that it's set, the object is set to show until the very end. Now if I drag this in a little bit, let's try here, you'll see that uh, triangle goes away. Now I could still drag this back out and none of those triangles are there anymore. 
there's, it's a little bit glitchy when it comes to this. Um, but my suggestion is anything that you do want to show to the end, make sure that triangle is there. Because occasionally, this, this won't be pushed up all the way there, and something will disappear right at the end. Or sometimes, when you're grouping things together, and you're trying to adjust the length of your timeline, it affects that as well. So if I'm pulling this out, and I want all of these to extend with it, that doesn't happen anymore. So how you do that is just select one or as many as you like, holding down the Shift key, right click, and click Show Until End. OK? Um, so when your timeline starts getting pretty long, it can be difficult to just drag these all the way there uh, to where you want it to go. So another trick is, let's say I want this to come in at 45 seconds. So I'm going to place my little bar right there at 45 seconds. And then I have this already selected and highlighted. I'm going to right click and choose Align to Playhead. So that red line there is my playhead. You can see now that starts all the way over there. Um, another trick using the playhead is if you're going to insert something, maybe some audio or new graphics, and you know that you're not going to want them to come in until later, if you have this playhead set to exactly where you want it, let's say 35 seconds, and then you insert your, your audio or your images, then that would go ahead and insert right there where you have it, rather than coming in at the beginning of the timeline and having to drag it all the way down. Okay? So that's really the basics of animation and timeline and storyline. As I mentioned, it's really simple. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of advanced animation techniques, unfortunately, but we do have um, quite a grasp on the timing. So now let's go ahead and go back to our preview and go over the player a little bit more. All right, so normally we don't cover the player features in this introductory level, but um, since we have the time now, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So up in our uh, top right, you see we have all of these options here. Uh, the transcript is where I had mentioned earlier where you can put your notes in that note section there. Um, your menu here, it would list all of the slides in our, in our presentation. Currently, we're just previewing this one slide, which is why you're only seeing the name of this one slide. There's also a resources option. Um, in the player properties, which I'll show you in a minute, you can attach any resources that you'd like, whether it's a link to a website or a PDF attachment. You can just put them in, and they'll all show up right here and be clickable and accessible to your user at any time throughout the presentation. Uh, there's also a glossary here. So I put in a couple samples. You see terms and definitions. You'll have a list of terms, as many as you'd like, and you could just click on one right here, and the definition will show up right at the bottom. Okay. So the basics that are always going to be on our player typically are volume control. However, if you don't have any audio, you can get rid of this option. Uh, the seek bar, again, you can get rid of that as well if you don't have audio. And our previous and next buttons. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of preview mode and go to our player properties. So back to the home tab. And right here, we have our player button. Go ahead and click off on that. All right. So right here in our Features tab is where we'll spend most of our time. Um, a lot of the other stuff is a little bit more customized. But you see here, um, these are our player tabs. We have our resources, we have our transcript, glossary, and menu. If we wanted a custom tab for anything, that you, any information that you wanted to include, you can just go ahead and check that, and then you'd be able to rename that tab to anything you'd like. Oops. Okay. So let's say you want to show these on the left-hand side. I would just select my resources, and these two blue arrows at the top, I would just move that up to top bar left. So you could do that to all of them. Um, there is another option for the menu to be displayed uh, at all times by moving that to the sidebar. So I'm select that, press the down arrow, and now it's over there on your left. Uh, personally, I think this takes up a lot of screen real estate, so if you don't have a lot of content on screen, that's fine if you want your users to be able to navigate easily. Um, but typically, we usually prefer the drop-down menu just because it saves a lot of space on the screen there. Okay, um, if you want to include your title on your player rather than on your screen, you just click this option here, and then you can swap out the text. And notice this is updating on the right-hand side as we change everything, so you can preview it. Um, you can also move the sidebar over to the right-hand side if you like. This is where we would select if we want to include the volume button, the seek bar, 
And the logo is also something you can include. Um, sometimes it's tricky to get the right dimensions in there, but you can insert your company logo just by clicking this and adding your JPEG or PNG file. There's also an option here you see for a search where if you have the menu, I'm going to go ahead and click this, you can see at the bottom of the menu appeared this little search bar. This is really convenient if you have a large course. Um, this search recognizes any on-screen text or any text that is in the notes. So if, if your user says, oh, I remember you know, something about certification, and you want to type in certification there, and then they'll be able to easily find that slide that they're looking for. OK. Uh, next, we have our menu here. So anything that is listed here, you're going to see in your menu. And these titles are coming from your slide titles that you see over here on the left. So maybe um, you don't want them to be able to jump ahead to the quiz. So you can actually just go ahead and press this red X down here at the bottom and press delete. It says, would you like to keep this item's children? When it says this item's children, that's referring to all of the slides that are within this, this quiz scene. And you can go ahead and press remove. Now, this will not remove it from your course. It's just removing it from the menu so that the user doesn't have access to it. Um, Let's say that you want your user to be able to look at the menu and to view all the slides, but you won't want them to be able to navigate freely through them. You want restricted navigation. So you can go ahead and click this um, sprocket down here for additional options. So currently it's at navigation restriction free. You can go ahead and click restricted or locked to go ahead and make sure that uh, your user can't jump freely throughout the course and skip ahead. Press OK. And um, if you want to get back those, that scene and slides you deleted, there's this button right here that says Reset from Story. You can just click that and Yes, and now everything's going to be back in order. Okay. Uh, resources right here, this is where I said you can include documents and links. To add something new, you just press this white little piece of paper down here. Go ahead and give it a title, which will display right here. And then you can link your URL or choose a file from your computer. In the glossary, again, to add a new definition, you just go ahead and click right here, insert your term, insert your definition, and click Save. It's very simple. And over here is colors and effects. So you have a really great control over all of the colors, fonts, shadows, gradients, anything that you see on your player here. Now, um, when you go to Advanced Color Editing, you click here and you see that there are a ton of options and several more options within each one. So, the main thing that most people want to change is the base, and BG stands for background, so I have that selected. You can choose your top color, which I have as white, and your bottom color, which I also have as white. Um, there's a top color and a bottom color, just in case you wanted to create a gradient effect. You can also adjust the transparency of all of these. Um, online, there's actually a really helpful diagram that points out um, and gives you codes of all of the different features and where you would go to change their color, since there are so many options here. Okay, um, page background is currently set to white. This is the color that you'll actually see within the web browser since your um, player does not take up the whole browser. So say I wanted to put a blue behind it, I would just choose that. And here's where you select your player font. You can choose any font that you have installed on your computer. Just go ahead and change that there, and it changes everything that you see here. Okay. Um, once you have all, all of these things set, your colors, your text, your labels, let's say you have multiple modules within a course that you want to create, so you can actually save this player how you have it right now so that you can import it to another project. So right here I'm going to drop down where it says current player. You can click save as, then you can just save it as, you know, standard template and press OK. And then what you would do um, when you're going to a new one, you could just open another player that you already have saved. OK. So those are this is kind of the basics of how you can adjust your player. Again, there are lots of options, um, but there are a lot of resources online to kind of tell you how to navigate all of this. So I'd suggest looking for some of those. All right, go ahead and cancel. So that brings us to our publish options. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here and click Publish. So currently we have this uh, at web. So if you're going to be embedding the course on a website rather than an LMS, you can just go ahead and use this option. Articulate Online is um, 
It's a LMS offered by Articulate where you can upload up to about 15 projects, I believe it is, and that way you can easily provide links uh, to other people to review it. Uh, it's a nice feature to have, but there is a monthly fee. So um, Next is LMS, which I would assume would be the most common option for most people. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the details of this one. Here you put your title as you want it to display within your LMS, the description if you need it. Um, here you can choose the folder where you want to save this SQUAM package. Uh, right here there's options for HTML and mobile devices. You don't need an HTML5 output if you're not going to be viewing on smartphones or tablets. You can uncheck this. But if you are, I would go ahead and check both of these. Um, because viewing on an iPad is much better if you have the Articulate mobile app. Um, so that's something that's useful to, to have access to. Okay. Um, so right down here we have reporting and tracking. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. So you want to make sure that uh, your titles are all the same. Sometimes they, if you've saved this document from another one, it doesn't retain, or it still retains that previous title. So you want to make sure that these show up as the same so your uh, LMS is recognizing it correctly. Okay, so this should all say blue theme template. Um, and then you have your options of how you would want this to report to your LMS. So you have passed or incomplete. Pass failed, completed incomplete, or completed failed. Um, if they have to get a, a passing score, then you would probably want to put pass failed. If they just have to complete it, then you would probably choose completed or incomplete. Okay, so I'm going to choose completed and incomplete since we don't have a graded quiz in this um, course. And then I'm going to go to tracking, so how we track that completed and incomplete. So uh, typically completed would be that they viewed all of the slides, so it's already set there. Uh, so once they viewed 17 out of 17 slides, it will send a report to the LMS that they have completed this course. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you have the option to choose what kind of SCORM package you want here. Typically, we are always using SCORM 1.2 for the time being. Um, and that's pretty much it. Then you would just go ahead and press publish and it would create a SCORM package for you to upload into your LMS. I see there's a couple other options here. If you did want to burn to a CD, you have that option. There's also an option to go into Word. And what this actually does is it gives you a screenshot of every, um, of every screen and also gives you the, the slide notes you see here and has the option to show your slide layers. So you might think, well, why would we want that? But um, it's actually really convenient for reviewing. If you have many people reviewing the course, it's an easy way for them to be able to put notes right in there and circle images and um, mark it up. So there is that option available, and that is about it. So at this point, you should have a solid grasp on how to create a new project, um, insert your text, images, um, you know, do basic animation, adjust your player, and publish your course. All right, so thank you guys so much for being patient with our technical glitches. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give us an email. And if you'd like to go into further detail on Storyline, you could take our intermediate or advanced classes. All right, thanks so much. Bye-bye.